Hi, second grade. Today we're going to go over your cold read practice for the week and your cold read vocabulary strategy. This week it is multiple meaning words. Multiple meaning words are words that sound the same, are spelled the same, but have different meanings. So in order to figure out multiple meaning words, you're going to need to do a couple strategies. You're going to need to visualize and figure out which picture in your head is the same when you're using it in context. You're gonna to have to look at the clues in the sentence to help you. And then another strategy is figuring out and noticing the parts of speech. Are they both being used as a verb? They're both in action. They're, are they both being used like as a noun, a person, place, or thing? So up here on the top of this anchor chart, there are four examples of using the word ring in four different ways. So the first one says, mom wears a wedding ring. Now I, I visualize in my head, I look at the picture they drew and I realize that they're using this word ring as a noun, which means a piece of jewelry that this person's mom is wearing on a finger. Uh, the second one says, take the ring off the napkin. This is also a noun, it's an object, it's a thing but it's not a piece of jewelry. This time it is something that is wrapping around a napkin. The third one says, did you hear the telephone ring? That type of ring, I'm picturing a telephone. I, am, I saw the clue, did you hear the telephone ring? So we actually call that a direct object, which we, we don't cover in second grade, but uh, I can already just picture in my head that it's, that ringing is the sound that the telephone is making. And then the fourth one is when I ring the bell, it is time to stop. So I'm visualizing someone just like that picture, holding onto something and moving their hand to get that bell to work. So that is a verb, but that person is doing an action. They're ringing the bell. Okay, really quickly, we're gonna go over this a test strategy that's similar to your cold read, and then I'm gonna go into your cold read. Here's an example. It says, the line of cars moved slowly out of the parking lot. So the first thing that we can do is visualize and picture what does the line of cars look like? And here there's a picture of three cars all in a row, one in front of the other. So we're going to figure out that this line of cars means, means lined up next to each other or in a row. So now we have to figure out which of the following sentences uses line in the same way it's used above to mean in a row. A, John's fishing line got tangled. I'm gonna visualize a fishing pole and at the end of the fishing pole is this extra line or string or material that's, that's attached to the hook. Is that the same as in a row? Moving on, B, write your name on the first line. Now I'm visualizing a piece of paper with horizontal um, markings on them that help me so I'm not writing crooked and it keeps my paper nice and organized. Does that mean that all of these things are in a row? not in the same way as a line of cars. D, I can't talk on, I can't talk long because Val is on the other line. We don't use this term as often today when it comes to telephones, but it's another connection or another um, someone, if you're on the phone with someone and another person tries calling you and you switch over, that's switching to a different line. Last but not least, so far we have not found one that means in a row. So let's try D. There was a line of people waiting to get tickets. I'm visualizing a bunch of people all standing in a row with um, kind of like what we do when we are going out to specials or getting a drink of water. We're all waiting our turn. And so I visualize this picture right here, all the people lined up in a row. Does that match a line of cars in a row? It does. So D is the only sentence that uses the word line to mean in a row. All right, great job. That's the type of skill. It, it takes a little bit of thinking. And so it's not 
it's not that you guys can't do it. You, you have the skills and the strategies to figure this out. It just, it's gonna take a little bit of time, especially at the beginning of learning a new skill. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to now share my document camera so that I can read this cold read practice is called Keeping Safe in the Kitchen. Now I did not prep this ahead of time, but if I were you, I'd still, I'm looking for you to still number your paragraphs. One, two, three. So you number your paragraphs where you indent. And then on the back, I'll check on the back and see. One, two, three, four. Okay, so we talk about one of our cold read strategies is to first read the title. So I read Keeping Safe in the Kitchen. And so I'm going to already start making predictions that it's going to be teaching us something about being in the kitchen and keeping safe. Maybe they're going to tell us about knife safety or staying away from a hot stove. I'm not sure yet. The next thing you do is you look at the picture if they have one and you can use that along with the title to make further predictions. So I see a girl, it looks like she's stirring something in a bowl. She's looks like she's in a kitchen because I see a big sink and some cabinets and a measuring cup and an egg. But I'm not sure how, how they're going to tell us to be safe when you're stirring something. So I'm not quite sure about the safety aspect yet. That's why we're going to start reading. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and read through this whole thing so that you have heard it once and then we can talk a little bit about the questions. Keeping safe in the kitchen. Do you like to help make meals at home? Cooking is fun, but you must know how to be safe. A good rule is to have an adult help you at all times. You should also learn how to use kitchen tools and equipment correctly. And you need to clean up after yourself. Here are some tips to help you stay safe in the kitchen. So already, I'm, this is my prediction about what they're gonna tell us about. This whole article's purpose is to teach us some safety tips. Because remember, every good reader, as you're reading, you're continually make, thinking about your text, you're asking questions, you're changing your predictions. Number two, first, you get yourself ready to cook. Do you mind if food spills on your outfit? If you do, put on an apron to cover your clothes or change into a shirt that can get dirty. Do not wear long sleeves or loose clothes. These can get in the way or brush against pots or in hot places. Do you have long hair? Put it up, away from your face. Next, wash your hands. Good cooks wash their hands a lot. I hope you're making predictions about why you think that's true. Number three, next, get the kitchen ready. Are there places hard, are some places hard to, for you to reach? Get a step stool for help. Close doors and drawers. You do not want to bump into them as you work. Clean your workspace next. Make sure the dishes and tools you plan to use are clean as well. Learn which tool and equipment you will be using. Knives, can openers, and other tools are sharp. Ask if it is okay to use them and have an adult show you how. Will you need a stove, oven, or microwave to heat food? Learn how to use the controls for heat. When you place a pot on the stove, point the handle toward the back. That way, no one will bump it by accident. Always use a pot holder or oven mitt to pick up pots and bowls. Have an adult pour anything that is hot. Clean up as you work. Wash your hands often. After you sit or cut food, put forks, spoons, or knives in the sink. Wash cutting boards and any other places where you set down food. If something spills, wipe it, wipe it up right away. You do not want just to clean the mess. If you do a poor job, people could get sick or hurt. When you finish cooking, check to see that everything is turned off. Put tools away where they belong. Wash your hands one last time, then you are set to enjoy your meal. All right, I am not gonna go over every single question, but I am going to 
Um, okay, this says, why did the author most likely write keeping safe in the kitchen? So that's talking about author's purpose. If you go back, we talked about it a little in the first paragraph. Why do you think the author wanted to write this? So you're gonna go back and see if you can find text evidence. Number two, this is a multiple meaning strategy. Read this sentence from the article. Here are some tips to help you stay safe in the kitchen. Which sentence uses tips in the same way it's used in the sentence above? Okay, so I am going to first figure out, I'm gonna highlight tips in this sentence, and I'm gonna figure out what does that mean? Here are some tips to help you stay safe in the kitchen. Well, using the clues around it, they're giving us something to help us stay safe. I think it's going to be something like advice or information, helpful information. So as I go through these other sentences, I'm going to see if I find any of these that also mean advice or helpful information. So F, Jan dipped the tips of her finger in paint. She dipped the tips of her finger. I know that that means the ends of her finger, so that is not helpful information. That kind of means like the ends of her finger. Num G, the boat tips over when it is filled with water. Okay, I'm visualizing a boat and it maybe a one in a bathtub, a little play boat, and if you fill it with too much water, it tips over. So that, to me, means something more like falls over or tilts over, which is not the same as helpful information. The boat helpful inf information over. H, dad gives us tips for doing the science project. So here's another word tips. Dad gives us tips. Would, could I use dad gives us advice or helpful information? I think that's gonna be the one, but I'm gonna double check. Helpful information. But I am going to double check on I just to make sure. I, the chair is not safe because it tips over easily. So I know from just from happening in the classroom sometimes, kids will be goofing around on chairs and they tip over, which means they're falling over. So that type of tip would mean to fall over or to tilt, just like the boat tips, falls over or tilts over. So based on all of those, like I said, it takes a little bit of work and you gotta think through, but the only other sentence that used tip to mean advice or helpful information is H. Dad gave us tips for doing the science project. So that would be your answer for number two. I don't wanna answer all the rest of them for you, but feel free to have your parents reach out to me if you need help, or if you want me to talk over a few other ones, I could post something later. But I want you to get a chance to try and do a few of these on your own. All right, hope things go well. We miss you, bye. Thank you.